All right, here we go, kiddos. This is lesson 33. We are so getting there. Um, so basically what we have to do here is we've got a series of solutions, which are answers to the problems. And they wanna find out how many answers qualify for each one. So for instance, if I put a zero in here, is zero minus eight, five? No. So I could have to check the three. Well, that's not gonna happen because that's gonna be negative. So obviously my number has to be something bigger than eight. So if we treat this like a step equation like you had before, we could treat it as h minus eight equals five. Instead of taking eight away, we're gonna add eight, keeping it balanced. So h has to be 13. So is 13 an option there? Yes. So the solution to this one is 13 only because it is an equal sign. So it has to be one answer that makes this happen. So that's that one. But look at this. This is an inequality statement. So we have h minus 8 is less than 5. So we can treat this the same exact way. But watch how these answers go. Watch this. So as I keep this balance, I need numbers that are less than 13 to make this statement true. So we need all the numbers less than 13 that work. Is zero less than 13? Yes. Is three? Yes. Is four? Yes. Five? Yes. Nine? Yes. 13? No. Why? Because 13 is not less than 13. 13 is 13. So all of these numbers can be in that solution to that inequality. Now, an inequality means unequal. We did these with comparison before, but now we're putting them into equation-looking things and inequalities is what they're called when they have the variable involved. So we can look at this one. So we look at 4g equals 36. If we want to solve this instead of Multiplying by 4, we're going to divide by 4. So g equals 9. Is 9 up there? Yes. So the solution here is 9 only. Okay, because it's an equal sign. So there's only one thing it can equal. But if we look at this next one, this is an inequality. But we need all numbers greater than or equal to 36. So we can treat this like an equation, but it's an inequality, divide by four. So we need G, all letters, all numbers that are greater than or equal to nine. So we need all the numbers greater than or equal to nine. Can I use nine? Yes, because it can be equal to it. So nine works and all numbers bigger than it in that solution. So all of these numbers work for that. Now, the fraction is a little different because one fourth y equals seven. So this is an this is a weird thing, okay? Because this brings us back to the reciprocal. Remember, drop, change, flip, um, bring down the left side of the fraction. So this is an equation, and see how it's being multiplied by a fourth. So we have to divide by a fourth. It looks super weird. But instead of doing this fraction bar, this would be a great situation to use divide by a fourth. Because then when we do this, divide by one fourth, y equals drop, change, flip. So y has to equal 28. Well, let's look up at the choices. Is there any 28s? No. So it's called an empty set. We can write the word none in it. We can write the word NA. We can write a zero with a line through it, but most people just put none or an empty set like that. So why had to be 28? Well, we also we know here that we need Y to be greater than 28, and this wouldn't have anything either. So these are just a few of the things to show that you can have one answer, you can have multiple answers, and that most of the time, your equal sign is only going to have one or it's going to have none of choices. Um, there's always an answer to it. But the inequalities can have multiple answers because, 
like here, it's all numbers greater than or equal to nine that are in the set. So all the ones bigger than or equal to nine worked and everything that was less, um, anything less than a 13 worked here. So this is just plugging in numbers, solving inequalities and equations. This is going to lead us into the next set, which is our last lesson um, of it, which is graphing and doing the last couple, which is graphing and doing inequalities. I hope that made sense. And as always, I love math. Hard for me to write it, but I will always find a space.